Hi everyone, welcome to week two of MBA 583, Strategic Planning and Implementation. This week we're going to uh, talk about Porter's Five Forces model and how that helps us in formulating strategies. We're also going to look at how to develop and use a competitive profile matrix and then describe the nature and purpose of an external assessment in formulating strategies. Um, we are identifying the 10 external forces that must be examined in formulating strate um, strategic plans. So when we do something like that, we really look at the economic factors, social, cultural, demographic, environmental, political, government, legal, technological, and then we look at the competitive environment. So we're going to cover all of that this week. In your textbooks, if you look at figure 3-3, the five forces model of competition, what we're looking at um, here is starting in the center, the rivalry among competing firms. This is the most po powerful of the five forces. And this is really why we do strategic plans, right? We have a rivalry with our competitor. So if we're running Starbucks, then our rivalry is with someone like Dunkin' Donuts or even McDonald's or with their McCafe. So if we continue on this model and look at the bargaining power of consumers, as consumers, we um, have the choice to continue buying from Starbucks or we could choose if they raise their prices to um, take our business elsewhere. Um, so we have a power to say this is what we want, this is uh, what we need. And we've seen over the years how Starbucks has gotten more into teas and um, different kinds of food uh, where you could have a lunch, you could have a, a bigger snack than just a biscotti. If we look at the potential entry of new competitors, is it pretty easy to get into starting a coffee house? Relatively speaking. Um, easier than creating a hospital, right? So potential entry new competitors is something that Starbucks is looking at. They're constantly scanning the environment and looking for any new coffee houses that are coming into their area, into their market, to see if they're gonna take market share from Starbucks. And then we have to look at the bargaining power of suppliers. In that case, what we're looking at is the suppliers are realizing that Starbucks uses only one type of coffee and the supplier for that coffee may um, ask Starbucks to sign um, an exclusivity contract where they are expected to buy all their coffee from Starbucks or um, they are going to increase the prices because they feel that they've got Starbucks kind of where they want them. And then the last element is, is the potential development of substitute products. So what's the substitute for us not buying um, coffee at Starbucks? We could go somewhere else, right? We could buy it at home. We could make it at home. Um, and so all of this goes into us determining um, the, the strategies and what we're going to do, what we're going to keep doing, what we're going to change. So all this leads us down the path of being able to identify who our rivals are, uh, determining what their strengths, weaknesses, their opportunities, their threats, all those types of things. Um, it also lets us look at what do our customers want, um, what are our competitors providing that our customers want, and what are they not providing. Hi. And so what we're really looking um, at in terms of competitive forces with the characteristics that um, are out there with the most competitive companies <clears throat> are that they're continually striving to increase market share. So Pepsi and Coca-Cola are continually fighting for market share. Um, they use the mission and vision as their guide for all decisions. Amazon constantly goes back to their mission and vision when they're making decisions. They always want to think about how does this decision impact the customer. And what we find in a lot of companies is that whether something is broke or not, they, they make it better. We don't wait for something to uh, a product to not um, be worthwhile anymore to discontinue it. We continue to replace things and, and make them better. <clears throat> and the way that we do that is we're continuing to adapt, innovate, and improve what we're doing. Um, and a lot of times we have to acquire companies. We see this with Microsoft, we see this with Google, they're continually acquiring new companies. And then internally we need to hire and train uh, and retain the best employees and managers possible. It's really about the people. And try to stay cost competitive on a global scale. Um, and so once we've looked at these types of things, we're set to do an external analysis or an external audit. And this focuses on identifying and evaluating the trends and events that are beyond the control of just a single firm. So there are things that happen in the environment that are laws that impact every organization. It doesn't matter if you're a hospital or a hotel or a university. We all have laws on, on hiring practices and, and um, offering benefits. So the external audit really looks at um, identifying what are the key opportunities and threats 
for our organization so that we can um, formulate our strategies for our strategic plan. Um, and so when we look at the external forces, we're looking at things like economic forces. So economic forces are what's the stock market doing, what's the price of gas, um, are people, do they seem to have a, a good amount of spending income or are we in a recession where they're kind of staying closer to home, they're not eating out as much, they're not going on vacations, they're not spending extra money, so we need to look at those things. We need to look at some of the, the social aspects too. Um, in society today in the United States, we're more accepting of legalizing marijuana. Uh, we see a lot more same-sex marriages. So these are things that are impacting organizations in terms of benefits they're offering and also in terms of um, what types of products do um, our options for making marijuana legal. And then we can look at the culture. If we look at the culture in the United States, um, by 2015, 20, excuse me, by 2050, 20% 20 of the population will be over 65. So people are living longer, they're older, um, and we also find that um, the projections are that in the coming years, the United States won't have one major demographic um, ethnicity. Um, we also find that um, uh, we have more um, wide ranging of ages in the workforce. So as managers and leaders, we have to figure out how do we get someone who's 18 years old up to, in my organization, we have people that are 85 with all ages in between. These people come from different backgrounds, different beliefs, certain values, and how do we get them all to work together? And then we can look at the natural environment forces. So looking at things like um, how is pollution impacting us? How is uh, um, hurricanes or storms, the, the winters this year in the Northeast have been longer than normal. How does that impact on um, the sale of snow tires or the start of vacation season? All of that comes together. And then if we look at the political um, and governmental areas, we can look at things like um, how, uh, look at things on a global scale. So how is our relationship with China, with Russia? If we're a car manufacturer, how does that relationship impact our our sales, our imports, our exports. We can look at the global price of oil changes. What are the local, state, and federal laws? Um, are there um, un union types of issues or antitrust legislation? All that comes together. And then we can look at technology. Um, is 3D printing going to come into our, our world? And we're going to be printing things in our offices that used to be sent out to big printing companies. Um, how do we use our mobile devices? Do we stop having office phones and everything just goes through our cell phone? Possibly. And then the other side of technology is really looking at how do we pr protect the data that we have for our company. We've seen that Yahoo has two or three breaches in a short period of time. How is it that their, their top technology people didn't um, protect better for that? And especially after the first one, how is it that they could have a second breach of, of their customer's data? And we see this coming to the forefront in a lot of organizations when we see them having chief information officers and chief technology officers. These are people that are at the top of the, the organizational chart, they're reporting to the presidents and the CEOs. So then we know that it's something that's really important to organizations and, and I think we like to see that. So when we take together everything that we've looked at so far, these are all the things in that big um, external environment that every organization has to deal with. Then if we come down to that smaller micro environment, the competitive forces, that's when we look at what does um, people just in the coffee industry have to deal with, right? They have to deal with fair trade of coffee, uh, importing coffee from Colombia into the United States. Um, uh, hospitals have to deal with different types of things. What is Medicare and Medicaid doing for their bottom lines? So within this, we take all those, those forces and put them together <clears throat> and then they have an impact on our competitors, our suppliers, our customers, our stakeholders, our, our markets, our products, our services. All that comes together and from that we can develop what are our organization's opportunities to gain market share, to enter new markets, and what are our threats that we need to be aware of for people kind of coming into our area or a threat that our product or our business may be on a decline. So those are all some good concepts for week two.